naloxone saved my life because I've OD'd years ago and I thought my stomach was pumped out. But now I know today that it was naloxone that I was given. Narcan saves lives. It's not just a little cliche, it's a fact. Not only in my life, but I've seen it save the lives of others. Naloxone is also known as Narcan. It's a medicine that temporarily blocks the effects of opiates in the body. It doesn't matter how you use an opiate, um, be that that you inject it, that you swallow it, that you smoke it, or that you snort it through the nose, you're still at risk for an overdose. Opiates include heroin, methadone, morphine, oxycontin, Percocet, Vicodin, and Codeine. How do you know if someone is overdosing? We recognize when a person's having an overdose, when we see a change in the color, you know, a person starts looking kind of blue, the lips begin to change somewhat of color as well. They're not breathing, you know, I mean, the breathing is very shallow, you know, um, they're not able to respond. Most overdoses happen one to three hours after the drug is taken. What do you do in case of an overdose? Step one, give sternal rub. If you take out your hand, please, you had your knuckles here, what you want to do is rub your knuckles right over here in the sternum. If you do it yourself, go ahead and do it. Put it like that, and you can feel it. You can feel it hurts, right? So when it hurts a little bit, that, that's what you want. A person's respond from that, you know, um, chances are, you know I mean, they're in a very deep overdose, and time is of the essence. Step two, call 911. Next thing you want to do if the person doesn't react is call 911. It's very important that you call 911 so there's help on the way. If not yourself, someone needs to make the call to 911. And then we who are trained need to get busy. In an overdose prevention kit, you have naloxone with a syringe or nasal applicator, gloves, alcohol pads, and a mask for rescue breathing. Step three, give rescue breathing. So after you give them the sternum rub and you stimulate the person, the person doesn't respond, you want to get oxygen to the person. You do that with mouth-to-mouth -mouth rescue breathing. You first want to check to see that the person doesn't have anything down the, the throat. So you want to clear the throat if there's anything in there. So you first want to check. Then you lift the neck like that, so you have an open airway. You put the mask on. What you want to do is put your hand right on the forehead and you pinch the nose closed so the air doesn't escape through there. Hold right here and breathe twice hard the first time to a quick breath. Wait five seconds and then give another breath. Then count to five and give one breath. Keep going like that. Many times people have been revived just from the oxygen. You know, just from oxygen being breath, breathed into them, they begin to breathe themselves and come to. If they haven't, then that's when we need to use, you know, our training in terms of the Narcan. Step four, give naloxone. One way naloxone comes in the kit is uh, an injectable type of naloxone. So we're gonna, the first thing we do when we're gonna give injected naloxone is put our gloves on. Grab the syringe that's in the kit. Uncap it. Take the naloxone vial, uncap that. Pierce the membrane and just pull up the entire content of the medicine into the syringe. Okay, like that. It's a muscular injection, which means the, the shoulder or the thigh, just like if you would give a flu shot. So you could actually administer the shot right through a person's clothing. I said, you don't have to roll up their sleeve or anything. You don't have to get a vein. You go ahead and just get it right into the muscle. Remember, at this point in time, it's a life or death situation. So you definitely want to just provide the person with, with the medicine. So we're going to use your shoulder, right? So basically, you want to go to this area right here with a jabbing motion like that, and then inject the full amount of the medicine, of the naloxone. There are two ways you can give Narcan. Muscular injection or nasal spray. OK, another version that you can have of naloxone is nasal. You have the injectable one, and then you have the nasal one. So the first thing to do is grab this piece, take the yellow caps off, take the naloxone, take the red cap off, put the nose piece on, screw it on like that, and then insert the naloxone vial 
bottom until you receive some resistance. You see it'll stop right there. And basically you want to put half of the dose of the medicine on naloxone into one nostril and the other half of the naloxone on the other nostril, like that. It doesn't matter if you do perfectly half and half, the point is that you want to get the naloxone or the spray into the nose so it absorbs through the nose. Step five, continue rescue breathing for three to five minutes. If the person isn't responding, give the second dose of naloxone. If they don't respond to a, you know, a spoken uh, request, like you call out their name to them, you know, if, they, if there's no response, you give them the second shot. Normally, the first dose works, but if it doesn't work in three to five minutes, you want to give the second additional dose that's also included in your, in your overdose uh, kits. Once you give it to them, they're going to come out. They might be jittery. All right, they might be mad at you. You might lose a friend <laughs> because you blew their head. They okay, blew their yeah, eye, yeah. all right? But if you was my friend, I'll give it to you whether you wanted it or not. Naloxone only lasts 30 to 90 minutes. Even though the person will feel sick from withdrawal, don't let them use more drugs. Once the naloxone goes ahead and wears off, the person can go back into an OD, so it's important that the person um, get into like, you know, the emergency room. Be there to support that person, to try to convince them to go with the ambulance so that you could be monitored. Stay with the person until help arrives. If they start breathing, lay the person on their side. You know, I was given multiple opportunities because of uh, Narcan. I mean, to this day, I still carry, you know, because um, it's no good having the knowledge and the experience, you know, um, without having the kit because you may never know when you may need what's in this kit. What puts you at risk for an overdose? Using alone. When a person overdoses, they don't usually die right away. An overdose death usually happens over one to three hours. That's a lot of time for someone to help you out by waking you up, doing rescue breathing, calling 911, or giving naloxone. But if no one's there, there's nothing you can do. Lower tolerance. A lot of times when somebody overdosed, it could be A, say they was in prison for a while. And now that they're coming, they're coming home from out of prison, they believe that if they was doing 10 bags before they went in, that they can come out and assume that same amount. Mixing drugs. They mix these drugs with the heroin and with um, cocaine and alcohol and things of these natures, and that's what makes you more susceptible to an overdose. I have a question. Would I give naloxone to my son if I found him unconscious, but I didn't know what drug he OD'd on? Yes, you definitely want to give him naloxone. Why? Because naloxone uh, doesn't have any negative side effects. Naloxone would only help the person, and if in case he has had any opiate, like heroin, this would help, definitely help. It doesn't hurt to give someone Narcan. If it's something else, fine. It's not going to hurt them. It's not going to interfere with any other medical um, practices or procedures that may need to be done. But if it is an OD and you have the signs of an OD, you just saved a life. But as long as we have the kit and the prescription, everything's legal. I yes. won't get in trouble for no. that. Fire department, police department, you know, these guys are around these people on a daily basis. They're the first ones to respond. You know, so they should definitely have it. Anyone who deals with the public, with homelessness, shelters, um, HIV and AIDS clinics, everyone should know about naloxone. No one plans an overdose to die that way. Generally, you know, it, when it happens, it is abrupt, you know, uh, it's brutal, you know, it's horrible. You know, uh, when it happens, it snatches you right out of reality, out of life, you know, and from life and all those dear ones and everyone that you love and everything you hold dear and that you love, you know. Um, it's over, it's gone, it's sudden, it's final, it's real, you know, and yet it's preventable. So how do we know if someone is overdosing? A person is overdosing if they're hardly breathing or have stopped breathing altogether. They're turning blue or gray in color. They don't respond when you give them the sternal rub. So what do you do when someone overdoses? First, give sternal rub. Second, call 911. Third, give rescue breathing. Fourth, give naloxone. Fifth, continue rescue breathing for three to five minutes. If the person isn't responding, give the second dose of naloxone. Naloxone only lasts 30 to 90 minutes. Even though the person will feel sick from withdrawal, 
don't let them use more drugs. Stay with the person until help arrives. If they start breathing, lay the person on their side. For more information, or to find out where to get an overdose rescue kit with naloxone, or to get help and support to stop using drugs, call 1-800-LIFENET or 311 anytime, day or night. Ask for overdose prevention.